Hey guys, welcome to the series on Microsoft Defender for Endpoints. The playlist with all the videos related to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, that is MDE, and Microsoft Defender XDR is in the description box. Today in this chapter, we will discuss live response. What is live response? Why is it required and how to use it? So live response is a great tool for security operations team. It enables them to connect to the device remotely in real time. It gives them the power to do in-depth investigation on any of the devices and take immediate response actions. So with live response, the analyst can do a lot of tasks, like for example, running basic and advanced commands on the remote device and then downloading files, like for example, malware samples or output of some PowerShell script. And then you can also download files in the background. This is a new feature of Microsoft Defender. Then you can also upload a PowerShell script script or executable to the library and then run it on the device. Next, it also allows the analyst to take any remediation actions or undo any remediation actions on the device. So let's see how this actually works. Let me go back to the Defender portal that is security.microsoft.com. In the main menu, let me go to assets and then devices and go to one of the devices here. So I'll go to the first one, this device. Let me close this main menu. So on the device page, there are three dots which says more actions. If I click on it, there is an option to initiate live response session. So I'm going to click on it. And I got this message saying failed to create a live response session because live response tenant setting is disabled. So before you can use this capability, you will have to enable live response. So let me do that. Let me click OK and then go back to the main menu. And if I scroll down, there is settings. Let me close the main menu in settings. I'm going to go to endpoints. In endpoints, general advanced features. If I scroll down, I think it's at almost at the bottom. Yeah, here it is. You see live response. You'll have to switch this on. This allows users with appropriate RBAC permissions to investigate devices that they are authorized to access using a remote shell connection. So if I turn this on, then it will, I can connect to the device and my live response will work. I'm going to turn this on and say if the preferences. So I get this message saying your changes will apply in a few minutes. OK, then with live response, there are two more options. If you are using Microsoft Defender for servers, then you can switch this on as well. Live response for servers. Right now I'm using it for Windows 11, so I'm not going to turn that on. This is for Windows Server or Linux devices, OK? And then there is another option as well, which says live response unsigned script execution. So if you don't turn this feature, which says live response unsigned script execution, you can only execute the, uh, the scripts that are signed. That is the scripts that have been digitally signed with a cryptographic signature. For now, I'm going to turn this on as well and, and then save preferences. Again, I get the message saying your changes will apply in a few minutes. So live response unsigned script execution and live response toggle buttons have switched them on in advanced features. Now let me go back to my device under assets. Go to the device, click on the same three dots. I'm going to click on initiate live response session and see my session started. Let me minimize this main menu. See my session has started and it says connect that a session established. So if I click on view details from here, I can navigate to the device page, but I'm going to close this for now. And then it gives me the session information. It has a session ID and it tells me who created this session. When was this session started? Session ended is not applicable because it is still going on and the duration for how long it is open. And then again, if I scroll down, it has device information. It gives you all the information about the device. It's a Windows 11 machine, health state is active and all the other details. So I'm going to close this as well. So let's run some commands and see how it actually works. I'm going to maximize this. 
So I told you before that with live response, you can run basic commands as well as advanced commands. So your basic commands includes things like starting a live response session, performing read only live response commands that is excluding file copy and execution, and then downloading a file from the remote, remote device using a live response. The other type of commands are advanced commands. So with advanced commands, you can download PE and non PE files from the file page. So PE stands for portable executable. This is a file format for executables that is .exe and dynamic link library that is .dll in Windows. So with advanced commands, you can download PE and non PE files from the file page. And then you can upload a file to the remote device. You can also view a script from the files library and not only view, but also execute a script on the remote device from the files library using advanced commands. Now let's go back to the Defender portal. Let's see some of the common basic commands. So the first command is cd. This changes the current directory. So suppose say I say cd users. Now I changed my directory from C to C users. OK, and if I want to see all the active connections, I can just say connections. And then now you can see all the connections that are on my machine, the remote one that I've connected to. And you can use CLS to clear everything on the console screen. You can also use clear cd space dot dot is to go back one level in the folders. And then if I say dir, it shows a list of all the files and subdirectories in that directory. So you can see this is the path directory read only created. When was it created? When was it modified size? So you get all the details with dir. And then if I use drivers, it's going to show me all the drivers installed on the device. So you can see all the drivers like this. And then to get file info on a file, you can say file info and that file name. I'm just using a blank file. So when I do it for a, an empty file, it says the file is empty. This command is not supported on an empty file. Let me change that and then rerun it. Now, this was the file that I did before. There was no testing word inside it. It was completely empty and it didn't run uh, file info command on that. I just added this and now I'm getting information regarding this file. It gives me the path. When was it modified? When was it created? Digital signature, file description, internal file name, product name, company name, version information. You see the type is text and the hash value as well. Next one is jobs. If I run jobs, it will show me the currently running jobs with their ID and status. And if you want to place any specified job in the foreground, you can use FG and that command ID that you get from the jobs command. OK, from here, there are no jobs running for me. That's why it is not giving anything. But if there are any, you can say FG and that command ID and then the uh, specified job will be placed in the foreground making it the current job and then you can also use find file this is to locate files let me give the same name test txt let's see if it finds this see it found this file and it is telling me the path and then if i want to download this file I can say get file and the file path. See, it downloaded the file on my local machine. So if you don't know any command, you can start with help. It will give you the list of the commands that you can use. OK, and then there is persistence. It shows all known persistent methods on the device. So if I scroll up, this is what the output is. So persistent methods are the techniques and methods used by attackers to maintain continuous access to a compromised system or network. So it's going to give all those details here. What could have been used? Then there is another command called processes. It will show you all processes running on the device. So these are the processes that are running. Then there is scheduled tasks. This will show all the scheduled tasks on the device like this. 
you can also see all the services running on the device using the command services. Then if you want to see all known files and startup folder, you can use startup folders and that will give you the files and startup folder on the device. There is also this trace command which will enable debug mode. So these are some of the basic commands. Let's look at some of the advanced commands now. Like for example, library. This gives you the list of files that were uploaded to the live response library. So you can upload files to the device. Let me minimize this. So if I click on these three buttons, if I say upload file to library, I can use this to upload the files like it says. Let me go back to the command line. Then you can use the command isolate. That means it will disconnect the device from the network while retaining the connectivity to the device. That means the device will be disconnected from the network, but it will still be connected to Defender for endpoints. I don't want to isolate my device, so I'm not going to enter this. And to release the device that is isolated, you can say release. And if you want to run any PowerShell uh, script, you can say run and the script name. And if you want to run a scan, you can say scan. So these are some of the advanced commands. So now let me close this. So if I want to disconnect from this session, all I have to do is click these three buttons, more actions and say disconnect session and then confirm that you want to disconnect it. See, you get a pop up saying the session has been disconnected. So if I go to the command log, it actually tells me what logs were run. If I go to one of these, it tells me when it was started, when it completed, what was the command, list files and startup folders. This is what I entered and then what was the output as well it gives me the output too so you can go back and check here if you have missed something so with live sessions you are limited to use only 25 live response sessions at a time and the inactive timeout value is 30 minutes so one device can only be in one session at a time so if i go back to the command line so if you want to analyze a file like for example you think that's a malware file you can say analyze file and the file name it says it couldn't recognize the command let me try with quotes yeah it is working now i think because of the space there so there was a space here and i didn't realize what to do so it says the status is clean this is the file hash anything suspicious infected was found so it gives you the details about it it analyzes and gives you the detail you can use this for analyzing the processes as well with the pid so if you do processes you get the processes and then if you do analyze process and the process id it will analyze the process as well so to upload file from library you can also use the command put file and if you want to remediate anything you can say remediate and and then the file name like for example i'm gonna say remediate file and the file name so if you see it says it has been quarantined so if i go to this location that is here see this you in this folder that file is no more there it has been remediated that is quarantine and if i want to restore that file suppose i did this like you know i took some remediation action but i want to undo this then i'm going to say exactly the same instead of remediate i'll have to say undo so undo file and the file name if i do that see the file was restored from quarantine and you can see the file that is back here so that's it for today guys i hope you learned a little bit about live response in microsoft defender if you did please don't forget to like subscribe and share our videos also leave in the comment if you have anything to say or any other tool or feature you want me to make a video on thank you so much for watching i will see you soon bye bye